I am here. Yes. All I, right. I, Camera, camera's pulled, working. Yes, sir. Yeah, I pulled it up on my laptop. I don't know what happened to my computer. So, okay. We're in the building. All right. Good deal. Well, Jason, thank you for uh, coming on this call. We're, we'll just call it Millionaire Conversation on Success. All right. So, we're just going to flow and, um, you know, really be able to talk to the people that are actually listening in uh, to this call. And obviously, we're going to bring on our CEO uh, to make a major announcement here later on in the call. But, Jason, once again, thank you for being on this call. And we were saying this is you're coming up on your third year in iMarkets Live. What is what has been the first three years? What has it been like uh, working within this particular company here? Yeah, it's been first off, it's been incredible. And before I go into it, uh, I want to say thank you, David, um, for the kind words and and also uh, just to show my gratitude to you, your wife, the leadership uh, for everything that you guys have brought. Uh, and I agree with you, you know, at the end of the day, uh, this is an amazing industry, uh, but it's even more amazing when you get to align with people that actually come to the table with a purpose, uh, that come to the table with heart and, you know, and, and are able to put ego and tenure and all that aside to build something amazing. And so uh, super grateful for you as well, brother, as you know. And uh, for everybody on the call, thank you for making time on your Sunday to be here. Um, so for me, you know, three years in IML, uh, I'm going to be real and raw tonight. I think people will appreciate that. Um, because at the end of the day, not everything is butterflies and rainbows and not everything in IML was, you know, when we first got started, um, I was a part of another network marketing opportunity. Um, I was extremely passionate about it. It was a company that had a vision I believed in and, you know, I, I just was broke, you know, a lot of people have heard my story and for those who have not, um, you know, I really, I really bought into this industry first before I bought into the company. I really felt like this is the vehicle to help people. And so you know, at the end of the day, I was, you know, doing what opportunities I knew existed. Um, two companies before this in, in a two year span. And, um, you know, when I saw trading, I needed money. And I said, well, look, I don't have to recruit. Uh, I don't have to, you know, get distracted with what I'm doing. I can just learn how to trade and, you know, let, let, let's see what happens. And so um, the first 60 days, uh, all we had in this company was the harmonic scanner. So I hear people now say, well, you know, there's not enough. And I'm just thinking, you know, sometimes you don't know what you don't know. But when we started, all we had was the harmonic scanner and, it, and that was enough. And, uh, you know, I fell in love. I fell in love with two things. Number one, um, the fact that I knew, me personally, I could really build this skill set. And so I fell in love with the fact that the time I was putting in was actually going to something productive. So that was big. But number two, also fell in love with the fact that as I looked around the community that existed at that time, IML maybe had 12 to 1500 people. Uh, I did see success stories. I did see, you know, people that I knew before who couldn't sell or recruit making some money. And so, you know, that's what really projected us. We got started in the company on a great foot. We had an amazing experience and decided to go out and make it happen. And so uh, the first year, the first few months were great. Um, and then the company went through some changes, you know, had to change up the compensation plan because of what happened in the industry with, you know, the shift to more of a customer acquisition focus. And so we went through that and went from a company that had probably 95% IBOs, you know, because of the way we were building to a company that did want to be compliant and legal and, you know, wanted to be around for a long time. And, and so uh, that transition was fun. And then uh, summer 2016, yourself. Uh, Yvonne Tapia, Alex Morton, a lot of great people started to trickle in and, and see that same vision. And so, well, Jason, I want to I back up. I want to back up for a second even before we go into that, because obviously there had to be something that you saw that caused you to continue down this path, right? Because most people with challenges like that were probably would have cut and run and said, you know what? Maybe I should do something else. Do, do you think, and I've got a chance to meet your parents, right? I've had a chance to meet your parents. They're very heavily involved in, in iMarkets Live. What would you say about your upbringing? Because I think it has a whole lot to do with it. For you to be an entrepreneur at the age that you are, uh, what would you say about your parents, their upbringing with you? Uh, do you think that had anything to do with the type of success you've been able to have? Yeah, 100%. I mean, I give... I give credit to God and the fact that I've got such a good alignment. And from a young age, um, my parents really had me in a church environment. Um, you know, had me going to uh, Wednesday night CCD, and I, I wasn't a fan at the time. 
Um, you know, but, but now I'm, I'm grateful, you know, cause it gave me some type of structure, but yeah, a few things. I mean, it's a great question because, um, for me, well, just in general, when you talk about success, a lot starts at the foundation. And so, um, you know, my father grew up, uh, in a military type of family. So he was raised around military, had that discipline and structure. Uh, my mom is just this, I mean, there's, there's a lot of great people in the world, but I'll put my mom up there with any of them. She's a very forgiving, understanding. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right. Especially if she's watching. Um, right. but no, they're just, my parents had an amazing mixture of personality and, and different upbringings. And, you know, at the end of the day, it was always, um, at the core for me and my brother, it was manners. You know, we were, we were expected uh, to hold the door for people when we went to the supermarket or, you know, to Walla. We were expected to say please and thank you. We were expected to, you know, open the door. And I already said that. But just to be polite and, and respect people. And obviously, when you get into the business of people, network marketing, um, all that stuff at the foundation, if it's there, you get a good jump. If it's not there, you have to go build those skills and build those principles. And so you can get to that place. But for me, um, I did have a rock solid foundation. It played a big role. And my parents are together. And so I knew even when their relationship was rocky, there was a point, uh, a one or two year point where, you know, it, it, it was rocky. It was a little bit tense, um, but, they, they, but they went through it and they worked through it instead of running away. And so uh, for me, I really look back at that moment a lot when I'm reflecting and, and really thinking about who I am as a person. And I'm, I'm grateful uh, that they were able to work through that because it shows me that challenges are temporary um, if you have a big enough vision. Right, right, right. Absolutely. And, you know, you talked about, you know, getting started in iMarkets Live and, and, and having the harmonic scanner. I think there was another major product uh, that the company had, and that product was the CEO, yeah, right, true. Chris Criteria. So I want you to kind of talk about uh, what was it that you saw in Chris? Because obviously Chris is, uh, our CEO is, is, there's no other CEO like Chris Criteria, right? I mean, okay. he is... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, very excitable, very passionate. I know you have the heart for people. What was it that you saw in Chris that really caused you to say, you know what, even though we're going through these challenges right now, and it seemed like everybody was just running like, you know, like cockroaches, what was it that you saw in Chris that said, you know what, I'm going to stick and stay, and, and I'm, I'm, I'm going to push through this challenge right here? Yeah. So uh, to be honest, you're right. There were two products, Chris. And I think this is a, a multiple answer question because they're all important. Um, first off, the first exposure I had to iMarkets Live was probably the most important um, because I got on a Zoom call, uh, Matt Rosa, myself, and Chris. And uh, at that time, I was a leader in another company and I, I let Chris know right off the bat. Um, I actually went on the call out of respect for Matt and um, I let Chris know, look, uh, I'm here. Can you hear me? My it's break. Oh, there you go. So it was like breaking up a little bit, but I, I let Chris know straight off the bat. I said, look, I'm a leader in another company. I'm not looking to build and I do want to learn how to trade. So if you can respect that, then I'm, I'm happy to be on the call. And you know, I, I kind of threw that out there because I'm big on not people talking about their intentions, but I'm big on making that judgment myself. And so, um, Chris was super respectful. He never pushed me and in that two months that I was a customer, even though I had a group of about a thousand plus a thousand to 1200 people in another deal. Um, he never pushed me once. He never asked me once. He never offered me anything to, to go. But what he did was offer me support as I was learning. Obviously the company was very small at that time, but I remember in the Academy going through my notes and, you know, texting him a few times and actually getting a response. And so, um, I felt the intentions were pure. Uh, people that are in something for money, once they get the money, it changes. Um, number two, uh, while we were trading live with Chris, I realized that he was consistent and that he was extremely, extremely knowledgeable when it came to trading. And, you know, when you want to become good at something, you want to follow someone who has the results that you're looking for, someone who has a lot of experience. You know, in this niche, uh, people trade for six months to a year, they get a strategy and you know, yes, I, I'm, I have respect for everybody because trading is not easy and, and somebody who produce results, that's great. But when you have the opportunity to follow a guy that has been trading for almost as long as you've been alive, that's appealing uh, to me because the end result uh, is, is to really build this skill set. And I know that law 
of 10,000 hours uh, to become a master. And so um, those were probably the two major things. But when I got to go out and meet Chris, uh, I also got to meet ISIS. And we had a leadership dinner in Las Vegas. And Chris actually, uh, two, two young guys at the time, had a massive success story. And uh, they actually made like, I think they were like around equivalent to Chairman 25. And Chris started crying actual grown man tears as they were telling their story. And for me, that was the end all because when people really have a mission and a heart to serve, when, when their service becomes a result, it's an emotional state. And that to me was so powerful. I was like moved by that because Chris talked about serving and, and doing this, not for the money, but then I actually saw it. So uh, that, that was a huge, huge moment for a lot of people. That were at that uh that were at that dinner absolutely absolutely and you know so you guys started out uh you started building obviously you first were a customer but then when you saw that the services at the time were working you then decided to to build the business uh i remember you told me you hit a level in the company at that time that was chairman eight what was what was that what was that what would that rank be today uh chairman eight is actually the equivalent to chairman 10. um okay. so it was 500 subscribers uh, 200, 200, 100, uh, but it paid 8,000 a month. Okay, so you guys hit Chairman 8, and then you have the, the challenge that takes place with the company, uh, yourself, several other leaders uh, decide to, to stick it through. I, 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 want you, I want you to kind of talk about recruiting up, right? Because you had someone that you had followed um, and, and, and somewhat of a mentor to you for many years, uh, probably in your former company, and I want you to talk about recruiting up because you've made, I think, the most important phone call that's ever been made in iMarket's life history, in my personal opinion. I think that that one phone call that you made uh, to Alex Morton uh, really, really changed the lives of many people uh, all over the world. And obviously, Alex is the executive vice president of sales. So some people may not know you're the actual individual that actually gave Alex Morton a call about this opportunity. He had made millions of dollars in Bema. He was involved in a, uh, another product-based company. And you had the courage and the foresight to make that phone call to him. What were you thinking at that particular time? Uh, what were the chances that you thought he would even listen? And yeah, anybody knows Alex. Alex is one of the most humble gentlemen I've ever met. So he would take that phone call from you. But what were you thinking and, and how important is it for the folks that are listening in right now? If you're looking to build the business, how important is it for them to recruit up, right? To call someone that maybe has had more success than them, maybe has more experience than them. What were you thinking at that time and how important is it to recruit up? Yeah, I mean, you know, I've actually been blessed to be uh, associated with a lot of individuals that I look up to and, and people that I admire, um, not only Alex, but yourself, Yvonne, Brandon Boyd, who's also a, you know, veteran of the industry. And, you know, I think the answer to that question lies in really two things. Um, number one, belief. It's something that we talk about a lot in success. It's something that David, from the first time I met you, it, it was like out of your mouth, every two sentences, just belief, belief, belief. And, you know, I think for me, it was belief in myself as a leader, uh, even when I didn't have the results, uh, belief in myself as a person, because at the end of the day, every leader starts off as a person, you know, that's learning and growing. And so I felt like I could get there, uh, which is the second part, vision. You know, I had vision for my legacy, what I wanted to do, um, and also a vision and belief in IML. And so, you know, when I, Alex and I had been actually really close while I was in that first former company um, because we were around the same age. And when I got started, it was past that first wave. And so I came from, you know, the nightlife industry. I had a huge, uh, we'll call it Rolodex, right? I had a huge network of, you know, wealthy individuals and stuff like that. And so I actually burned the ships and went all in in network marketing, left that income. And so I met Alex my first month. And while everybody was, you know, Alex is a phenom. Alex is someone that honestly, all types of people from all around the world, all ages, men and women look up to because of his humility and it's, it's raw. You know, I, I saw that. And as everybody's coming in, uh, Alex walks in the room and everybody's going up to him to take pictures. Um, I actually waited to the side um, because I didn't want that type of relationship with him. And so I'm going to answer that question now for you guys on the call because 
this is really, really, really important. Um, but I wanted that relationship. Not that I didn't want a picture, not that I didn't want, you know, to, to have an experience, but I wanted a relationship that was more practical, right? That was more real than just, hey, here's a picture, you know. And so I waited and we had a conversation. I just let him know, look, I'm all in. Um, I don't expect for you to, you know, give me all your time now, but I am going to work hard. And if you have anything you can share with me, I'm open. And so that really set the relationship off. And, and over the course of a few years, you know, we kept in touch and, and we really had a good relationship, not only with him, but also with his family. And so uh, when I reached out to him, it was funny because I know Alex. Now, at this point, we've been friends for three years, three and a half years. And, um, you know, I know Alex is not a numbers guy. And so we had had one conversation before that about IML and he said, this Forex thing, I just don't know, man. I just don't know. You know, numbers, math is just not my deal. And so, you know, when I reached out to him, I said, look, before you do anything, before you look at anything, just do me a favor and get on the phone so we can talk. And my conversation to him was simple. I said, look, trading works. And a majority of the customers that come in actually want to learn how to trade. But you as an influencer, what's your goal? And he said, well, I just want to help people. I said, look, we're going to help more people being attached to a skill set that doesn't require selling and recruiting than we are just being attached to a company that has a compensation plan or 80% of the room can't relate because they don't have the confidence to sell. And he's like, hmm, you know, I, I, could, I could feel the energy start to shift a little bit because I had the posture. And it's, it wasn't that I was like, oh, you know, it was more like, I have the confidence in our relationship. I have the belief in myself, the company, and the vision, and uh, and it got his attention. So I, I got to speak to his dad. That was the second call, um, and and it went from there. And and the last job was just, hey, Alex, look, you don't have to say yes, but fly out and meet Chris. And so uh, for me, it really came down to David, um, the confidence and the belief, the vision um, to say, look, I really believe we can change lives here. You got to take a look. And what I want people to really take away from what you just said was the, the self-confidence, uh, self-confidence that you had. And in the book, Thinking Grow Rich, it talks about the self-confidence formula. Uh, you're not going to make that phone call if you, you're not going to have the posture that you talked about unless you've done the work internally. You know, unless you've done the work, because no one, no one actually reaches success on accident. There's no such thing as lucky success. Uh, you can get lucky winning the lottery, but you can't get lucky in success. You just can't. There has to be work that you've done internally that will allow you to develop the confidence and have the posture to recruit up, to call someone that you have a great deal amount of respect for, but that person has to have respect for you too, right? They can't look at you and, and, and not feel your energy and not feel your belief in yourself, not feel your belief in what you're calling them about. You can't stutter on the phone. You can't doubt on the phone. You've got to be confident. You've got to have the posture. And that's what Jason had. And that's why Alex was willing to listen uh, to what it is that he had to say. And, uh, and then, so they, they meet Alex and, and Chris meets and, and uh, they make the decision to, to get going. So what was that first month like? And where were, I mean, you and Matt, you guys were building the business together. So where were you guys at at that time in iMarkets Live when Alex first got involved in the business? Yeah, so when Alex came in, uh, we had just undergone what I'll call like a cleansing period, like a detox for the whole company. Um, and, you know, we went from what I, could, what I would call that first wave, you know, of, of all the traders out here, kind of that A, that one wave, you know, the number one. And we started to hit that number two retracement, right? So one up, retracement number two. And, you know, for us, we maintained Chairman 10. Um, we were finally stable with our core leadership, the people that saw that vision, the Brandon Boyds, the Christopher Derricks, um, the Trade House, and, and many others. And so we were Chairman 10 uh, on our way to 25 at that time rank-wise. Um, that first month when Alex came in, it was, it was exciting. I actually flew out to Arizona. Uh, he was living in Scottsdale at the time and uh, we got an Airbnb. I think it was seven, seven or eight days. We drank a lot of energy drinks. We did a lot of launch calls and uh, it's funny. What, what kind of energy drinks? 
uh, verse. I'm joking. <laughs> <laughs> we actually, hey, the, the fuel that brought us up, right? It was a, it was a reunion. <laughs> so uh, a lot of energy drinks, a lot of sleepless nights. And uh, it's funny, but I, I, we had an initial list of individuals that, you know, Alex wanted to speak to. And I'm thinking back now, and I don't think any of them are the ones that help make the legacy happen. So it's just funny. That's like another little nugget for you guys out there, especially if you're just getting started in the business. Uh, don't get too emotionally attached to what you think, because usually what you think is never the reality. Uh, you end up partnering with people you, you never believe you would. Mm, right. So, so you guys get going, and, and you said you guys were, you, you had hit Chairman 10, and you were on your way to 25 when, when Alex came on board? Yeah. Yeah, we were okay. on our way. We were 10, on our way to 25. All right, cool deal. So Alex comes on board. Uh, a couple months later, Yvonne Tapia actually reaches out to Alex, right? Reaches out to Alex, and, 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 that, and that goes into it. And now uh, you guys really start to put it on, right? Because people don't know the structure of how to build iMark is like, you need three legs, right, to build it, right? So if you're going to go Chairman 25, it's 500, 500, 250. If you're going to go Chairman 50, it's going to be 1,000, 1,000, 500. So you and Matt, you guys really start pouring it on. What was your schedule like? What was your work ethic like, you and Matt, when you guys decided to really turn it on and take this thing to a whole other level with, with IML? It was, it was insane. Um, <laughs> I had – so – Let's, let's, let's bring you back to actually what in working environment we had, okay? So Matt and I, when I moved down to Miami and we started IML, Matt and his fiance had one room. We had an 800 square feet apartment, okay? I have a room and I have a little desk from Ikea. My computer chair, the back of my computer chair literally touched my bed, all right? And that's where I worked. There's actually some videos on YouTube of uh you'll see it's like 10 i think i remember it i think i remember that apartment <laughs> yeah well that's where we did some launch calls so definitely you know i had the little map in the back and you know i was running a, a six-figure business from uh you know a 600 square foot house so anyway uh i remember literally waking up uh and it was just iml from the minute you know the minute the the window cracked the sun open or the sun cracked the window open to two three in the morning i mean i had a People on the call probably see me use this daily planner that I made on Photoshop. I printed out and that thing was slammed. Uh, we're talking 13, 14 hour days on average. I would sneak out uh, for two hours a day. I would turn my phone off and sneak out to LA Fitness so I could play basketball and keep my head clear. And be, that was the only way I kept my sanity because uh, if we weren't on the road traveling, um, we, were, we were literally both grinding on calls non-stop for really the first year year and a half mm -hmm. so you're doing conference calls you're doing meetings uh just tell me what 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 were you guys doing what was the activity like specifically mm -hmm. what was the work that you guys were doing to then move through the ranks 25 50 100 because it happened like almost like back to back to back so but those people that really want to turn this thing on and really want to get things going what were the specific work that you guys were doing uh to, to accomplish those results yeah well it was actually a few different things so number one um with yvonne coming in and this massive wave of leadership who really didn't know much about forex at all uh it was a ton of training um especially with that part you know uh physical events driving all over florida to help launch leaders um so that was number one you know making sure what was important to us what people entering our world was that people really understood risk management, how to get started with the products the correct way, why education was the priority. So that was a big, big chunk of it was as these new teams were coming in, trying to get in front of every single person possible to get them trained the right way. But also that year, I personally enrolled myself probably 20 leaders who hit P2000 and above, and Matt had another 10, 12 leaders at that level. And so, you know, together we're launching like 30 to 35, maybe 40 builders at really at the same time in our other lines of business on top of then in October, uh, David, when, when we sat down with you and then Gary and the Crookshanks and all these other leaders started launching at the same time, uh, it was, it was madness, but a mixture of, you know, launching opportunity events and, and a good chunk 
uh, focused on the training. Yeah. And then you had, you had, you had Brandon Boyd's uh, organization that was growing. You had Austin Godsey uh, growing as well. I remember meeting Austin at the event in Dallas. I want you to talk about the power of events because you threw uh, an event when we first got involved. You threw an event in Dallas, Texas. I'm not sure what month it was. That was in uh, But I think that was like the very first event that IML had, had put together where, you know, it was over 1,000 or 2,000, 3,000. I'm not sure what the number was. Uh, but let's talk about the power of events and how did that accelerate your business uh, over the last three years that you've been with, with uh, IML? Yeah, if I, I guess if I could give credit to anything specifically, like one specific practical function, um, it would be events. Uh, in general, that event was our first, not really a conventional, regional in Dallas. There was 800 to 1,000 people there, um, and that was really hosted and paid for and organized by uh, me, Matt, um, Brandon, and a few of the other leaders. And yeah, David, you're right. That was in January. Um, so then 90 days later, um, we did an event in Atlanta and that was right around the time we hit chairman 25, right? No, we were 20 yeah, 25, 25 in January. Or Dallas. Yeah. We were 25 in Dallas in Atlanta. Uh, right around that time is when we hit 50. Then 90 days later, we had that, that event in Orlando, uh, that you guys hosted. And I think that's when we hit a hundred. Uh, and then for Houston, it was 250 and beyond. So, guys, events have been huge for us because we rank advanced every 90 days for about a year and a half. And, um, you know, the, the jump from 250 to 500, I believe, was about six, six to eight months, something in that range, if I'm not wrong. But why, why would you say that events are so critical? And obviously, you threw an event in January, the beginning of 2017, to really kick off the year, get everybody fired up, get everybody excited about where. Uh, the year was going to go, but what would you say is the most important thing and, and why events really create that type of success? Well, I think it goes back to the same thing that I would say with when I was talking about Alex, you know, number one, relationships. When you like building on Zooms and phone calls and group chats, it's obviously key for day to day, but, you know, knowing communication, studying communication, um, I understand how important that face-to-face -face relationship is for this business, you know, so that's number one relationships. They become more real when they're, when they're cemented in person, you get to go out and do dinners. You get to go out and maybe do some fun stuff with the team. So, so things that are outside of the business that show the real human character, uh, that you don't always get to see, you know, so that's number one, but number two, energy belief. When you do recognition, um, it makes people feel so full and, you know, it's almost like an event can re-energize somebody. Uh, so having those events and promoting those events has been pivotal because I know that every single person we get to an event is going to leave that event recharged, re-energized and on fire. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, as you were talking, you said the most important thing as far as why events really actually accelerate a person's business because that's where belief takes place. That is where a person makes the decision that I'm going to be successful because they now get a chance to see someone else that looks like them, sounds like them, uh, be recognized and be successful in the business. And now they make the decision that, oh, if she can do it, then I can do it too. Or, or if he can do it, I can do it too. And that's why events are so critical to the success of any company. The culture of the event, the standard of the event uh, is so vitally important to the growth, the long-term growth of the company because this is where people come to. People, guests come and look and say, okay, is this a group of people that I want to do business with? Right. Uh, are these the types of people that I would, like you said, the relationships, is this the type of environment that I would want to bring my team to, right? And 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 we saw that with, with iMarkets Live and, Obviously, that's continued to grow, and, and we're excited about what's, what's taking place. So, you know, Jason, you've now, obviously, with, with working in, in IML, you've, you've, you've gone out, you've proven uh, that you can build. You've proven that you have the work ethic to go out and become a Chairman 500, yourself and Matt. And obviously, with a new company, uh, challenges arise, right? Challenges arise. And you've always been that person that's always stepped up immediately and said, hey, what can I do to solve this challenge? 
you know, what can I, where can I step in and, and handle this? And obviously, uh, you know, iMarkets Live has had challenges with merchants, challenges with back office, challenges. Um, I would probably say those are probably the two main challenges that the IMO has had. And I want you to kind of speak to that because you've always maintained uh, a positive attitude. And to some people, even myself at times, uh, it's, it's like, hey, bro, like, you know what I mean? Like, I'm positive too, but hey, we got some issues. We got we to gotta get fixed, right? And you're like, David, I'm positive in the group chat, but trust me, behind the scenes, I'm letting people have it. I'm taking heads off. And you know, I said, Jason, you know, the leaders need to see that too. They need to know that you've got their back 1,000%. So I want you to speak to what are some of the things right now as you move into uh, a new position, a new direction that Chris will talk about here in a second. I want you to talk about some of the things that are happening right now in IML from the back end, because yes, we've grown in the field, right? We've grown as a company. IML is talked about in a good way, in a bad way, all around the industry, right? <laughs> Which is fine. We don't, we don't really care about that, but our company is known now, right? So you're stepping into a role uh, that is absolutely needed. You've always pretty much stepped into that role anyway, but what are some of the things now that IML is putting in place to make sure that we do have a valuable opportunity? Because the real opportunity here is to learn how to trade. That will never go away, right? That will always be there. So I feel confident sharing this content with anybody. But from IML perspective, as far as building, building the organization, what are some of the things that you guys are, yourself, Chris, and Isis, uh, and Gerard, and, and, and Frank, and Obviously, Alex and, and Yvonne, what are some of the things you guys are putting in place right now to make sure that we do have a valuable opportunity moving forward? Yeah, um, great question and probably a, a few different angles to the answer um, to get it all out. But uh, first and foremost, you know, this is something that has kind of transgressed over time. Um, you know, for me, I, I did come and I was blessed uh, before I got started in network marketing uh, to work with a gentleman who runs a very, very successful public relations company in New York City. Um, so I, I worked for him. He's a CEO, massive company. They deal with like Jordan, NASCAR, Taco Bell. And I worked by his side for six months, actually in his office as his like kind of an apprentice almost. And working with him, it's so funny how everything in life happens for a reason. You don't really know why you're somewhere, but set it up for you know where we are right now in the moment because I learned a lot about what companies go through. Real corporate, big Fortune 500 companies even go through major challenges, major decisions. And you know he really, by watching him, I got to observe success, but also patient success. And so you know when I came into IML, I obviously found pa passion and love for Chris and Isis. I matched my heart, matched their heart. I really, truly, and I don't know if anybody, you know, people talk a lot, but I truly mean this. If you take away all the money tomorrow, I'm still the same guy. I wake up, I'm blessed. Obviously, I like having money because I hated being broke. But at the end of the day, I really love serving and I, I enjoy it. It feels good when I can help somebody get past the challenge and I become addicted to that. And so over the course of time, you know, as challenges arose, um, I noticed that a lot of people will step away from the fire when it gets a little bit hot, you know, and a lot of people go, whoa, this is intense. You know, it's an intense moment. I'm not going to lie. Uh, being very honest, you know, there's a lot of times that are pressure filled, but I've learned and I fell in love with, I've fallen in love with working through those moments and uh, getting to a result. So I always start at the problem and work towards a solution. I don't spend too much time, you know, discussing it. Let's just take action and work through it. And so, um, obviously, yes, through IML, uh, we've brought in people that we wanted to help. And, you know, David, the, the one thing that I realized, and uh, it really helped me because, you know, Chris and I had had this conversation. You and I discussed this many times, and, and Vaughn and Alex, we've all had this discussion. But the thing that really did it for me um, to, to go all in and, and really do this is that I feel that the person who steps up and really takes charge has to love the company and they have to know the leaders and the leaders have to respect that individual. And yes, it is a whole lot of work that I didn't need to pick up, but at the end of the day, I do love the company 
and I go to sleep at night knowing that people are taken care of, I'm happy. So um, where we're going, okay? Um, first off, we have this new back office and I am not even confident, I'm certain. Uh, we, we were very careful because the situation we got in with the last back office was one that was never fun. Um, you know, don't want to make any excuses or point fingers. I'm not that type of a person. Everything happens as a result of something else. And so, um, I never like to put blame on other people, but at the end of the day, um, you know, we outgrew that situation. And so we had to find the best way to protect the people and get to a new home. Cause once you get over that bridge, you're golden, but that bridge, and for those of you guys who have been in that industry, in this industry for a long time, you know, that sometimes companies don't survive you know, that transition and it's, it's a little bit scary. And so, um, going into this new back office, I'm actually extremely happy, um, about where we're at. Uh, we did have some challenges the first two weeks, but we've worked through them and thank you to the leaders for just being patient and, and sending, you know, emails and, and sending things that are happening. So, um, as far as the back office is concerned, uh, you guys are going to see this thing open up, you know, right now we're like here, <laughs> it's like this big. Um, but as time goes, we're going to continue to stretch like a flower, you know, and just open up to its full potential. And, um, some of those things are going to start even this week. So really excited about that. And obviously the, the second piece, uh, is the merchant side of things. And uh, I'll be flat out honest with you guys. We dealt with a very large amount of fraudulent transactions over the past really 12, 14 months, um, where individuals are, finding, well, we're finding ways to uh, create accounts with stolen credit cards and, you know, created some challenges for us, for sure. And as a company, you know, thank God that Chris and Isis have credibility. They have a financial foundation that is very strong and they've been able to work and, you know, honestly pay the price. Um, you know, behind the scenes, you don't always see uh, what type of sacrifices are made. And I want to remind everybody of that because it's easy to get frustrated. Listen, I build, I have, you know, the organization is, is my life. It's my friends. It's people that I love dearly. So any challenges hit here, um, for me, but I've seen the sacrifices, financial time, um, and emotional that Chris and Isis have made behind the scenes to help us get to a very great place. And, uh, we're, we're continuing to go there every single day. And so, uh, DI, if you want me to go in, I can, I jotted down some notes so we can touch base on specifics, but I'll throw it back to you first. Yeah. Uh, yeah. 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 I think, I think, I think you should. So, so people can really feel confident in uh, the direction that the company's actually going in. Uh, I think that's important. Obviously this is a seven figure mentorship call. So this is not a call for someone who's looking to make, you know, a hundred dollars a month. This is, you're part of that formulation group, ladies and gentlemen, you're part of the, the leadership core that's going to help this company get to where it is that it, that it wants to go. Uh, so Jason, if you can take some time and, and talk about some things that, that, are, that are happening, obviously, um, you know, different payment options that are happening, things that are happening with the back office, um, some new features that are back there. Um, I, I think, I think that'd be great for everybody to hear. Yeah, absolutely. And um, so, so let me start off with a few things um, that we tackled this week. Um, and that we're going to, and then I'll transition into some of the stuff that we're working on right now. But um, first off, actually, what I want to address right now, uh, before we even get into the back office stuff, is Paylution. Um, so Paylution, guys, is actually uh, a very, very large organization that's connected to one of the biggest banking systems in the world. And so obviously, being a, por uh, a payment portal is basically what they are. Um, they also have rules and regulations to abide by. And with the amount of fraud uh, that was taking place, not only with iMarkets Live, but across the industry and across the world, I mean, I, I was paying for my direct TV today for the Sunday ticket so I could watch football, and my card was declined by the bank four times, and they couldn't give me an answer as to why. So it's not just happening in our arena, it's happening around the world. Well, uh, what Paylution needed to do with their compliance department is verify all the information for all of our users, not only just to protect themselves, but also to protect us. See, it's important that we also look from both sides of the fence when we talk about the opportunity, because uh, some people sometimes are frustrated and they come and they say, man, there's so many challenges, but you know, I, I always, I'm, I'm reminded and I'm constantly reminding myself that 
the company also has to do the right thing to protect the company or else there is no more company, right? And so uh, what Paylution did was they wanted to verify a very large amount of accounts and they let us know on a Friday morning uh, that they uh, disabled those accounts until verification took place. And so obviously that created a, a what the heck just happened moment. And uh, we've been working through that for the last two months. And uh, it hasn't been easy. Uh, we've been trying to do everything we can. But here's the good news. Uh, this week, uh, they made a huge programming project for us to create a software where the individual can now, through our new back office, log in to the pay. And this will happen this week coming up. You'll be able to go into your back office, click the Paylution button, fill out the uh, various fields that you need to fill out, your name, your address, your phone number, and you'll also be able to uh, put your photo ID in the system, which will then go to Paylution. They're going to verify your account, and then we get, we get to pay you every single Friday. And so we are, uh, I actually spoke to the VP um, who's been very hands-on with us, and he was very sincere. He said, look, we don't want people to hate you or hate us. Um, but we do want to protect both sides of the ball and we put together a solution we believe in. And so uh, very confidently, uh, I would never talk about something on a call like this if I wasn't sure a uh, solution was coming. So pay Lucian, uh, I am praying, you want to pray with me, that's beautiful, um, that on Wednesday, uh, we have the final solution um, for this. And so sometime this week, uh, we, we believe that that'll be resolved and then we can move forward. But here's what's even better about the commission side, uh, about the payout specifically for uh, our IBO since this is the you know the seven figure mentorship call we want to get you guys all to that mark so this is important um, with this partnership uh, that we have now with our uh, new programmers and our new software providers we have some features that we have net not yet turned on uh, that I believe we're gonna actually enable this week we didn't want to go into week one and two with all these fancy features and you know, have to work through kinks and things that are kind of expected and then have all these new features that people are also hitting us up to understand. And so um, we actually have something called the credit wallet, which is really exciting. Okay. And so the credit wallet is basically this, your commissions, okay, that get paid out typically now directly to Paylution on Friday, uh, will actually have the opportunity to be kept in a credit wallet, which is located in your back office. You can design, um, or you can designate, sorry, not design, you can actually designate how much of your commission, if not all of it, you want to keep in the credit wallet for that week. So you'll be able to go back there and say, uh, I want to keep $500 in my credit wallet. Now there's also a page where you can take those funds, pay your subscription, pay your IBO kit, so you can actually keep that money to pay your own stuff, or you can then use that money to pay somebody else's subscription or create a new user. And so this will be great uh, for individuals around the world who want to, maybe leaders, you know, P5000s, Chairman 10s, who want to take some of their commission flow and utilize that to help create new accounts, put incentives out to their leaders. You know, there is a beautiful leaderboard in the back office that we're going to start utilizing a lot more. So, you know, David, maybe you go to your organization, look, anybody on my group who makes the top 10 this month, you know, I'm going to put a thousand dollars, you know, so we, we have the ability to do cool things like that in the back office, which is amazing. So credit wallet is coming very soon. It's going to help a lot in these different countries where people don't have credit cards at hand. Uh, that's big. And also, uh, in the near future, at some point we are looking to institute Bitcoin payout. I'm excited about this one. Um, and this is another big one for, you know, different countries around the world, uh, where you can actually take your commissions and get paid to, your, to a Bitcoin wallet. I saw uh, one of their other clients, they showed me a walkthrough of how it works. It's honestly, it's amazing. You put your little wallet code back there, boom, press a button, all the money goes to your Bitcoin wallet, um, amongst many other things that we're exploring. And so we are working super hard to make it so it's not Paylution dependent, but that, that'll be a great solution along with some other solutions. So um, Paylution's covered, payout's covered. Let's talk about pay in. Um, David and I actually had a, a short little conversation before this call uh, because we got the opportunity uh, to be introduced to a company called Maxi Cash. And so you guys know uh, we have Bitcoin paying, credit card paying, Skrill paying, and now we have something called Maxi Cash paying. Uh, we have some marketing materials that we're going to be working on uh, from the company to release to IML this week so you guys can understand it better, promote it better to your teams. 
Uh, but I really got excited about Maxi Cash uh, because I, I dove in there and I, I was going to make a quick video, uh, but I didn't have all the information. So I am going to make a little tutorial video to shoot out to the field here over the next few days. But here's the deal with Maxi Cash, okay? If you're checking out, and, uh, I think it even works for your internal subscription, but if you're checking out a new customer, you can select the Maxi Cash Pay an option. And there's three different avenues that you can take advantage of Maxi Cash with. Number one, credit cards. You can use Maxi Cash as a direct credit card merchant. So if for some reason you have an issue uh, with our direct merchant and IML, there's a $9 fee, but you can use, that's from Maxi Cash, not from IML, but you can use their credit card merchant to process your payment to IML. The second thing is PayPal. And it's funny because Gerard and I, Chris and I, we've discussed trying to use PayPal for years. And PayPal doesn't directly correlate uh, with MLM or network marketing companies, but you can use PayPal through Maxi Cash to pay IML. And a lot of people have actually used it this week. I think it'll become a popular option. The third option will be a game changer, complete game changer, especially once we get in a rhythm and figure out how to use it. Um, especially in Africa, I saw some leaders here uh, from Ghana, Nigeria, Cameroon, et cetera, et cetera. Um, Maxi Cash is working super hard to, to really bring some amazing solutions to Africa. Um, but they have, if you download the Maxi Cash app, so go to your app store, Android, Apple, type in Maxi Cash space app. So Maxi Cash, one word, space app. Download the app. You make a quick profile. I did it before. It takes literally three minutes. And they give you an option to load your Maxi Cash wallet. Really wow. cool. So wow, wow. you go in and wire into the Maxi Cash wallet, credit card into Maxi Cash wallet, or PayPal in to Maxi Cash wallet, and use those credits to then pay IML. So right now, so so in, uh, Jason, uh, real quick, it sounds it sounds like obviously you guys are working on so many different payment options for people, not just in the U.S. but all around the world. But real quickly, I just got a text from uh, our CEO. Uh, Chris Terry, he's got the night owl call that he's got to do. Uh, but we want to bring him on real quick because he's going to make the major announcement. Guys, just welcome the CEO of uh, iMarkets Live, a gentleman that started this company five years ago that's uh, set a lot of people free uh, from all around the world. The vision that he actually got started. Uh, it's the CEO himself, Chris Terry. You there? Yeah, I lost track of the time, DI. <laughs> um, let's see if Chris is. Here. Uh, okay, it says need to add him. Yeah, well, ask him what name he's under. Chris has many aliases. Uh, where are we at? And the chat's going so crazy. Yeah, you're, the, you're the host, so you'll be able to. Yep, I'm searching through it. I see two Chris's. So the CEO? Oh, hold on, hold on. There's actually two Chris Terry, so we have the luck of the draw here. Oh, wow, it's moving so fast. Hold on one sec. Here. Oh, you know what I can do? Oh, just uh, promoted the wrong person. I think I can search. He says it says CEO. Huh? He's under CEO. Sorry, Chris. CEO. There's like two people under Chris Terry. Oh, there I found him. I found him. We got him. Chris CEO will be joining the webinar. Boom. In the what's up? Hey, what's up, buddy? Man, I've been listening to this call. I'm on fire. I want to join IML right now. <laughs> Give him the link. Give him the link. Hey, the floor is yours. I know you got the uh, mentorship. I mean, I know you got the night owl. So, floor is yours. Yeah, yeah, cool. Um, also, in addition, um, if you want, once I finish, you uh, we have Skrill. There's 13 new payment solutions that are being integrated. So, uh, it's outstanding. We have Skrill actually is adding. Um, credit cards, they're adding a, a bunch of different wallet paying solutions. So we're opening up between Maxi Cash and Squirrel and everything else, 20 different payment solutions. So that should set the foundation for at least a billion. So uh, everybody go out and get yours, man. It's, uh, man, Jason, I have to say, thank you for everything. Um, when we went through our changes in 2016, you know, two people stood up. It was Brandon Boyd and Jason both called me at the same time. I had phones in each ear, and they're both saying, I'm planting my flag right here. Wow. And we agreed to move forward and dominate the industry. And quite honestly, uh, Jason has been instrumental across the globe 
not only in his own organization, but helping everybody's organization from Garrett Roberts and the Lawrence's and the China's and um, all the other teams. Uh, Gary, I see Gary, everybody across the globe. Um, he's been instrumental helping. He's uh, touring all over the place, which um, it's just mind blowing. I toured with him for a little bit, I think a few weeks. And, you know, it's one thing to, to see their stuff on Instagram. It's another thing to see the way these guys move. I mean, they're moving from trains and buses and motels and hotels and changing in the middle of the street. Outstanding. So he's proven himself as a, a leader, Chairman 500. And he's been working more and more behind the scenes with myself, with ISIS, with our programming team, uh, with our uh, trading programmers. He's helped put the managers together under the, um, on the trading side, on the swipe side. Some great things are coming. I know swipe trades have had a little bit rough. Great things are coming. We got some new teams behind there. It's outstanding what, what's happening. And quite honestly, Jason has his sleeves rolled up all the time. He's always working. And one thing I love about Jason, he's never disrespectful. It's like we talk to each other as men. We may bounce heads, but we're always respectful for one another. And it's, it's amazing. Isis herself is extremely difficult to work with. And Jason's figured out you know, the ISIS code, you know, let her say her thing. He gets in there and calms it down. But the team we got right now, it's, it's really rock solid. And all the new people put in place, man, it's outstanding. So Jason and I spoke. I asked him if he would accept the position of vice president of field operations. And he's like, yeah, let's do this. Let's kill it. So um, I just want to announce Jason as a new corporate Vice President of Field Operations. He's stepping away from the IBO side, from the Chairman 500. Now, he still has a relationship with, with Matt. He's, they still have their, their that's their, still their business, obviously. Um, but he's uh, stepped up, stepped in, and he's been full force for the past two weeks on this new integration amongst everything else. So, Jason, welcome to the family on the corporate side. Congratulations. And you know, Jason treats the business as though it's his business. Very hard when you work with people that they actually treat it as their own. People get out there and they, it's a job or it's something else. It's not that important. But Jason, uh, outstanding, outstanding. And I'm looking forward to a lot of great things. And we're putting that foundation um, for that billion dollar goal, you know, for that million, million customer goal. I have to get off the call right now. I have the night owl starting. So whoever wants to shoot over to the night owl. I'll see you in about a minute. Other than that, Jason, welcome to the family. Congratulations, and thank you for blessing us with all you do. So everybody, give Jason a big round of applause. Give him a lot of ones, a lot of sevens, a lot of love. I'll catch you guys later. Thank you so much. Thank you, brother. I appreciate you. We'll see you uh, in a few minutes. So, DI, back to you, brother. We can, we awesome, can. awesome, awesome. It's great to hear uh, the CEO, Chris Terry come on and make that announcement. Uh, Jason, this is something that's well-deserved. You've always stepped into that role. Wherever there was a challenge, you've always stepped in and, and looked to actually serve and actually help. So congratulations again. And, and uh, this is all about helping this company continue to move forward. I know you guys will be bringing on uh, other leaders as well that have experience on the corporate side to help this company scale up and continue to grow uh, in iMarkets Live. I want to thank everybody for being on this call. Jason, if you want to go ahead and close it out, uh, the seven-figure mentorship call here tonight. Uh, this is your floor right now. Go ahead and close it out, and uh, we'll end it with a party. Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, D.I., uh, appreciate you again, brother. Just the beginning. And honestly, um, I don't want to be on here for too long. I'm going to give Chris that respect. And honestly, that call, that night I will call is super important. But uh, I want to wrap up with a few things. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put together um, – a bunch of different creative ways to communicate with the field. You know, one of the things that I really want to focus in on um, is increasing the speed and the, and the precision of communication between the field and, and corporate uh, on both ends, you know, on both ends. And obviously you need a toll in between. And so uh, I'm willing to be that toll. It is taxing at times, but um, it's, it's what I love. And, and at the end of the day, uh, my goal uh, is to help all of you reach your goal. And so uh, I'll be putting out some some creative ways or thinking of some creative ways uh, to communicate with the field, um, thinking about putting together actually a, a newsletter or some type of an email 
uh, that I can communicate with you guys and give you updates, maybe some video updates. Uh, but we're working on a lot of stuff. And so here's what I'm gonna say. Be patient. The next couple of weeks are gonna be incredible. Uh, I really think that right now, uh, this company is in back in phase one, 100%, um, and really at a place where we feel like, you know, not that we're starting over, but kind of a, a rebirth, like an unleash, right? We're being unleashed. And so uh, a lot of work being done in the foundation. Uh, we're going to be doing a lot of work to customer support. A lot of work uh, has been done on the trading side. Honestly, we made that a priority because 85% of the company is traders. And so I'm really proud uh, of all the educators, the traders, uh, Spila for stepping up and, you know, all the leaders who are inside of that trading ecosystem uh, for doing what they do. Like Chris said, you got a lot planned. Swipe coin going live here shortly. Um, Steve Greger's done a great job with swipe trade so far. And um, you guys will see some big, big, big things um, from all the product side of stuff. So a lot to do, uh, but we'll save those updates uh, for another time. I appreciate all you guys. Truly grateful, humbled. Uh, and blessed uh, to be here, um, oh, always here, but to now be here uh, to better serve you guys. So thank you, DI, for putting the call together. Uh, truly, brother, you're, you are one of the most um, just important people. And I know you don't even want to hear it, but you are. And uh, we are all super, super, super grateful. Um, guys, the women's event is going to be off the chains. And we will also see you at Go Beyond in Atlanta. I will be in the building. Everybody should be in the building. Uh, January 18th and 19th to kick off the year on fire. So much love, guys. Uh, see you soon. Thank you for your hard work, dedication, and uh, that's it. All right. See you, see you guys. Night.